I'll tell you what, football manager has a sense of humour, doesn't it? Today we are back. It's the Champions League. It's the quarterfinals. We've been gifted a rematch against AC Milan. Remember AC Milan? Remember last season? We took them on in the round of 16 in the Europa League and we lost... Well, in slightly embarrassing circumstances, Ibrahimovic got a hat-trick. He's still playing for AC Milan. Good news, though, he's not registered for the Champions League, so today he can't hurt us. Plan of attack is to make it to the Champions League semi-final. It's not going to be simple. I think we have the quality to do it. Let's see how we get on, shall we? How's it going and happy Sunday, folks? We are back here at Arsenal. We are back here for the Champions League. You've already heard all that spiel. Shall we talk about matches since we last here? Lots of stuff is happening off the pitch. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But first and foremost, two games played since you were last here. I lost 4-0 against Leicester. I don't know what happened. We didn't turn up. We're out of the FA Cup. I feel like I've summarised that quite well. The only other match played since we last here against Chelsea in the league. A massive win for us. A 4-2 win. We very nearly bottled it. We were 3-0 up within 25 minutes. From there, they got two goals back. Andreas grabbed a goal that put the game beyond doubt. And with it, we won 4-2. And while speaking of Andreas, you can see here, looking at the Next Gen Award for the top 50 wonder kids in football, he won the award. Fair play to the Norwegian. He's been a pretty important part of our team this year. He's continued to develop really, really well. You can see just based off his average ratings alone, he definitely has stepped up this year. 22 league appearances. He has been fine for us. Elsewhere in the team, you can see here, Andre Santos um, continuing to develop well. He was in the top 10 once again. And if we look at the other players, you can see here, Victor Roque got 13th, Bainer Gittins got 16th, two players who haven't been playing super regularly for us, but they are continuing to develop, they're playing well in the under-21s, and uh, well, nice to see their progression recognised as much as anything. Now, there is one more player on this screen who might be an Arsenal player, and I know what you're thinking, have you signed Gavi, Jack? No, I've not signed Gavi. Have I signed Duranville from Andal? No, I've not signed him. I have gone and signed the big boy of FM23. Endrick has joined us, or will join us, next January. A future transfer already agreed at the end of the Brazilian season. This man is nuts this year in Football Manager. Mega consistent performer. You can see here, he is just a crazily good player already. Maybe some concerns about his adaptability, but given the fact we've got such a good Brazilian core in our team, I'm hoping he'll take to the squad like a duck to water. And uh, yeah, we have picked him up. I realise I'm just... Failing to mention the fee. 15 and a half million. I think it's a bargain. I think it's one of those ones where time will tell. But yes, Endrick is joining us. I'm kind of excited about it. On the outs, Maitland Niles has announced he will be departing at the end of his contract. We kind of knew this was going to happen, but he has now officially secured a move to Napoli. So he's leaving there on a free or Paphanope. Is that Parthenope? How are you meant to say Napoli's non Napoli name? They're Napoli. Couldn't they name them after an animal like Zebra? What's blue? I might just call them seal. A seal's blue. Let's move, let's move on. So plan of attack for today. We have the home game against Milan. Hoping we can have a better start to our Champions League knockout kind of stage than last time against Benfica where we had to come back from behind. After that, Leeds United is midweek in the league. We're not going to worry about that today. And then we have Milan in, well, as you can see here, eight days' time. So the games can continue to come thick and fast. Worth noting, with that win against Chelsea, we are still top of the league. We have maintained that five-point cushion. Man City, unfortunately for us, did beat Manchester United last weekend. A game where I was kind of hoping they'd slip up. They didn't. But anyway, let's get straight into the game today. A little bit of injury news. You can see here Tommy Yasu and Kieran Tierney both out for this game. Rodrigo still coming back from his torn hamstring, still only able to play 45 minutes. It feels like he's been injured for a long, long time. And well, that position is up for grabs. As a result, Martinelli and Andreas, the two men kind of competing for it. I feel like Martinelli's form has been very meh, but he seems to do well in Europe. He's just a European player, I think. Three goals, four assists. For that reason, I'm going to give him the nod. Besides that, though, Zinchenko coming in for Tierney, still a very, very good team for us. If you are wondering about Milan, they are currently top of Syria. Two points clear of Inter, although they have played a game more. Teo Hernandez is their key man. He is a rather good wing back. 
a little bit scared of what he might be able to do over on the left hand side. Of course, for us, we're sticking with the 4 2 3 1. It is a system that has really served us well, I think, in this second half of the season. Jude Bellingham back in the team today, which is great to see. Of course, he picked up a knock last time out. Looking at Milan's side, you can see here they've got Hernandez, Tonali, and Benesser in the midfield with Fakir behind Giroud. A bit of a scary combo through the middle. I feel like Giroud in Football Manager is always really good. Certainly last year in Football Manager, tall, meaty strikers were kind of the order of the day, and Giroud fit that bill. I'm not sure if that's still the case this year, but. I suppose we might get an indicator in this match. Okay, Martinelli on this near side, rocking that number 11 shirt. feel like he's going to be very important to us today, as is Pedro Porro. On the overlap, that complete wing-back role we continue to persist with, and it gets him into really good areas like this, where he's going to be dispossessed, but it falls to McKenney, and then it falls to Jude Bellingham. It's three of the players we signed this year. Three of the players that weren't here when we took on Milan last season, and they embarrassed us. And with 11 minutes here, we take the lead. Pedro Porro with the initial run. It was actually a pretty good tackle by Rebic, but it fell straight to McKenney. He played it to Jude Bellingham. And I'll tell you what, since Jude Bellingham came in in January, he has been pretty good for us. He's won uh, Premier League Player of the Month, I think the last three months in a row, or at least a young Player of the Month. He's been in some absolutely ridiculous form. And well, that form continues again here. Playing that shadow striker role, a role that, well, at least at the moment, feels rather good in Football Manager. And well, could things go from good to great here? I'll tell you what they very nearly did. Jesus from range hits the outside the post. And Milan, they could have been two goals down very early on here. Half an hour play, not a whole lot of chances in this game besides the two replays we've seen. We've had 60% of the ball. Of course, as the home side, I want to try and take a cushion into the second leg. I feel like in this kind of game, especially with how it's played out so far, we should be looking for an extra goal or two. And I'll tell you what, we're going to get another goal. It's Odegaard with the finish. It's Pedro Porro with the assist. That man out on the right-hand side, again, causing all kinds of issues for Milan. We talked about Teo Hernandez, didn't we? And how good he can be. I'll tell you what, he has been humiliated a little bit here. The give and go, Porro in bind, pulls it back. Wasn't the most simple of finish. Loads of players in front of him, but Odegaard smashes it into the roof of the net. Gives us a two-goal lead. And in a game where there's not been a whole lot of chances, we have been clinical. Two minutes left of the half. I'll tell you what, a third would be good, wouldn't it? McKenney. it's back wide with Pedro Porro. He is running the show right now. Holds at the play, little turn, cuts inside, hits it. And I thought for a second he was going to find the back of the net. I feel like the players want revenge in this game. They remember last season. They remember how Milan humiliated us and Zlatan Ibrahimovic got a hat-trick. It is a superb first-half display. I'm not going to overcomplicate things. They have had three shots for a 0 .03 xG. So, uh, yeah, they're not exactly creating high-quality chances. I kind of look across the team, but Kenny's not having the best of matches. Do I need to take him off? Should I take off Pedro Porro on a booking? I don't want to get a sending off in this kind of situation. We're in the ascendancy. I feel like there is more goals to be had here in this game that could really give us a healthy cushion going into the second leg. Oh my word, what has happened? Ball's been gifted to Jude Bellingham and he's kicked it straight at my nan. I don't know, what was that? Every so often in Football Manager, you have one of those replays that kind of breaks your suspension of disbelief. That was that one there. I was thinking about taking off Porro, but of course, Tommy Yasu is out for this game. So I'm just going to tell him to ease off tackles. Kessie's not had the craziest of matches. I'm going to bring in Andre Santos for him. In the final third, Martinelli's not had a crazy game either. I'm going to bring in Rodrigo on his road to recovery. And you know what? Why not make a triple sub? Ivan Tony, come on down, mate. 57 minute. Making a few changes a little bit later than I normally would. I feel like this year in Football Manager, I'm a changed man. I make my subs early. I've waited almost an hour. Extreme discipline from me. But I'm going to hope that the players we brought on can have a bit of an impact for us. Right now, McKenney on an 8.0 is running the show in midfield. Of course, signed from Juventus. A player somewhat familiar with Milan. 10 minutes left. It is still two goals to nil. There is going to be a chance here. I'll tell you what, if they were to get a goal back, it would be against the run of play massively. I want to believe we could extend our lead to a third, but with Zinchenko daydreaming on the ball, we might have issues. They very nearly dinked Ramsdale there. That was a cheeky finish. Good save by the keeper. Still two goals to the good. I'm going to shout demand more. I've got one sub left. You know what? Let's make it. Who am I going to take off? I'm going to take off Jude Bellingham, who's a bit tired. We're going to bring in Andreas. The best wonder kid in world football. I can label him that now. And well, Milan, they're looking to get a goal back. Of course, away goal's not a factor, but they'd still like to cut the deficit to one goal. As for ourselves, a third goal here, I don't think would be undeserved. It's a case of, can we create it? Tadebo plays it forward to McKenney. 
Odegaard. Inside to Ivan Tony, of course. Ivan Tony, one of my favourite players, I think, in this Arsenal team. He has defied all expectations. Pedro Porro down to the byline. We've seen this before. Gives it back to McKenney. Back with Porro. Turns his man. He is causing Teo Hernandez all kind of issues. Porro with the ball. Time and space to whip in the ball. Back post over everyone. Andreas will keep it alive, though, the Norwegian. He shifts onto his right foot. Could he shoot from range? He did shoot from range. I'll tell you what, the keeper has made a superb stop there. Four minutes of added time. We have been so much better than Milan in this game. It's been a, a disciplined performance, a good performance. Would have liked that third goal. Feel like we were pushing for it towards the end. But ultimately, it's a two-goal cushion. And it's a cushion that we did not have at any point last time we took on AC Milan. I really do believe that with this performance, we have set ourselves up for the second leg. Uh, where, of course, we are going to be heading to the San Siro. Rodrigo, just coming back from a Tom Hamstring, uh, bruised his thigh in that game. Out for five to six days. It's a bruise. He'll be okay. Also, Porro, man of the match. Give him some praise. Give that man a coconut. He has been absolutely insane for us. I can't, feel, feel like I can't say that enough. He has been such a good addition to the team. And, well, hopefully we're going to be able to maintain the level of performance in a week's time. We have got Leeds midweek away I'm going to rotate the team for that one. Hopefully we can navigate that result with ease. I will see you guys in Italy in eight days time. I'll tell you what, we don't like to do things simply here at Arsenal. We have had to come back from behind midweek to beat Leeds United 2-1. You might notice here, they have an XG of 1.77. If we watch the goals, their entire kind of XG was built up off a mad scramble in the box. Something we just didn't deal with. The ball eventually found the back of the net. But I think they ended up with like a 1.5 XG off those three attempts there it was absolutely wild from there though down a goal we had to dig deep and well you know who came to the rescue it was Jude Bellingham Andreas played him through Bellingham dinked it in for another goal I think that's goal number 11 now for him and then later on in the game it was Andreas on the near side putting the ball in I think it was Andreas no it was I tell you what it was Bellingham who played it in Dive and Tony he back killed it to Odegaard 2-1 back from behind again and we won unfortunately for us Man City also won. Man City just keep winning. It's rather frustrating. They just beat Watford 5-0. I will say they did just lose in the quarterfinals to Real Madrid. And if I'm not mistaken, that means the winner of our game will take on Real. Do I really want to take on Real Madrid? They've just won 3-0 at home against Man City. They're quite scary, aren't they? They're top of the league. They're doing well. But you know what? We're already taking on a team today who are top of their domestic league. We're top of our domestic league. We are Arsenal. We are one of the big dogs now. And well, here is our team of big dogs for this game. We are, of course, taking on Milan away from home. 2-0 up after the first leg. Just need another similar solid performance. In terms of team news, we are pretty much at full strength, with the one exception left attacking mid, Rodrigo. Just don't quite feel confident bringing him into the team yet. But Andreas did impress me last time out. He was pretty imperative to the comeback against Leeds. With that in mind, he is going to get the, the nod ahead of Martinelli. Kind of keen to see how he gets on today. So Milan continuing to play their 4-2-3-1. I've noticed here they've got CDK into their team. They've moved Fakir out wide. Worth noting that Gabriel Jesus has not been in good form for us. Uh, I, of course, dropped him against Leeds. That was why Ivan Tony played. But having had a little criticism chat with him about his recent form, I'm hoping he's going to turn up today. The name of the game, of course, for us here is just a solid defensive display. Milan are going to have to score at least two goals to come back in this game and take it to extra time. If we are good at the back, that will be good enough. Uh, of course, that's not to say I don't want to score goals. I love scoring goals. I'd like a goal. Can we have a goal, please? Jesus, through, one-on-one, -on -one, misses it. He was offside. It wouldn't have counted anyway. I think he knew. That's why he missed. Corner for us. We've been on top in this game as the away side. Could we now get our noses in front? Odegaard puts it in. It's headed away. But only as far as Jude Bellingham, who's going to keep the ball alive here. Plays it to Tadebo. Could go forward. Not really sure I want him to pull the trigger from here. Although, I'll tell you what. He has pulled the trigger, the centre-back. And it's only just gone wide. Milan in possession. Kalulu at the back for them. Not the best player in the air, Kalulu. I feel like I, I kind of view him as more of a full-back than a centre-back. Although, I know in real life, he's kind of made a bit of a transition in the last year or two. Anyway, Teo Hernandez is getting to the byline. He was very quiet last time out. Can we keep him quiet here? I mean, he's had the shot there, but if he wants to do that, he can do that all game long. That was an atrocious effort. 15 minutes left of this first half. We've been dominating the ball, 55% of possession, but I think the most notable thing here is Milan with that Teo Hernandez shot. That was their only shot on goal so far in this game. We have been keeping them quiet, which, of course, as I said earlier, that's the name of the game. They have to score two. 
We kept them quiet so far, although we might be tested a bit here. Hernandez's cross is deflected. Ramsdale clutches onto it. Now can we look to build something out here? Normally we'd play out from the back, but Milan are playing a rather high press. And well, with that, they're forcing us to go long. Pedro Porro, Odegaard. I do love the link-up play, by the way, of the advanced playmaker with the complete wing-back on the near side. I feel like we saw that on full display in the first leg. Of course, that was a change that came about with Saka leaving the team. But yeah, it definitely acts as a way for us to play. And while that is not how I want to see us play, that was awful. And it very nearly cost us. Trying to play out from the back, McKenny caught in possession. Of course, I talked about McKenny, former Juventus player. Kessie used to play for Milan before he moved to Barcelona the year before we signed him. So uh, yeah, he's in familiar territory here. And well, so far, it's not been a classic, but 0-0 is fine. I'm going to tell the players I'm far from pleased. But deep down inside, that is a perfectly serviceable first half. I have to imagine, as this game goes on, Milan are going to commit more men to the attack. Half an hour left of this game. There's only been three shots on target by either team. It's not exactly been a classic, although they might have a chance here. CDK bringing forward the ball. Has Giroud in the middle. Talked about his aerial presence. Got to be wary of that, as have we got to be wary of Tonali. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, we've got lucky there. That was not far wide, and that, I think, is going to inspire some changes from me. Pedro Porro, I'm going to change him to a wing-back on support. Zinchenko can go wing-back on defend. I'm going to drop both our defensive mids a little bit deeper here, just to try and see out this game and manage this match. Jesus hasn't had a good game. I'm going to bring in Ivan Tony elsewhere. Andreas is going to come off for Martinelli, and uh, you know what? You know what? I'm, I'm going to make a call here. I'm going to take off McKenney. Uh, not McKenney, sorry, Kessie. I'm going to bring in Andre Santos just to try and see out this game. Dropping the two centre mids a little bit deeper. I feel like a 4-2-3-1 with the defensive mids this year in Football Manager is actually really good. In previous years, it was never that effective. I feel like you'd always struggle to build it out from the back. The kind of defence to midfield to attack would always be a bit kind of stretched. But this year, it feels like a lot less of a factor. I say all of that, having gone more defensive. They've scored within two minutes of the change. So maybe, maybe I don't know what, maybe I should move them forward. Maybe I should move them forward. Solbakken plays it forward here to Debo. Oh, I spent 40 something million on that man. Or was it 30, 50 million? It was a lot of million. That is an atrocious header attempt with it. Milan take the lead in this game. We are still ahead on aggregate. It is now a one goal game. 15 minutes left. We have not created nearly enough in this game. I'm going to tell the players just to move the ball forward and be a little more direct. Don't need to look for overlaps in the same way, however. With 10 minutes left, we're still ahead. We don't need to panic. We're still having a lot of the ball as well. Of course, I wouldn't mind getting a goal on the night just to settle the nerves slightly. Would rather it not go down to the wire to the very death. And well, maybe we can make something happen here. Andre Santos switches it over. Pedro Porro is the man there. Has got Odegaard inside. Gives it instead to McKenney, who lays off to Andre Santos, who shoots. And oh my word, I thought it was about to find the back of the net. My man makes a mad save to turn it around the post. Last year, it went to extra time against Milan. I don't want that again this year. Corner, whipped in. Tamori heads it away. Andre Santos can't get there. Teo Hernandez now bringing it out for them. It's potentially a breakaway opportunity because Fakir is all on his lonesome. Gives it back to Teo. And well, fortunately for us, the highlight ends abruptly. Breathe a sigh of relief. I'm going to just tell the players the time waste slightly and also lower the tempo slightly. Let's just manage this game. Let's just kill off this match. Three minutes left here two minutes left three minutes of added time left please just end the match we have a corner if we score here breathe a sigh of relief ball whipped in ben white i don't know if that was a header back to martinelli or a shot i'm hoping it was the former and it's deflected in i mean bellingham scored he's celebrating with the away fans in the corner i'm not sure was that deflected off the defender i'm not sure what happened there we've scored it doesn't matter it's jude bellingham again the man is single-handedly changing the fortunes of our season, it feels like. Martinelli floats in. Bellingham heads it. And then, yeah, I think it hit the defender. Taken around my number. The initial shot was on target. Jude can take all the credit. And, well, breathe a sigh of relief. We're into the Champions League semi-final. We've navigated a Milan team who, let's be honest, have been an absolute pain over the last two years. But I can say with confidence now, we are better than them. As I suspected... Real Madrid in the next round. That's going to be fun, isn't it? 
I feel like we've set up a pretty blockbuster end to the season. There are six league games left. We are currently top, but with our remaining games, it's not going to be easy. We have got some big dogs coming up. You can see Manchester United in 10 days, West Ham in 17 days, Real Madrid, probably, probably a game of note as well. Yeah, it could be a rather hectic end to the season. And as well as the aforementioned games, we've also got Liverpool and Tottenham at home before the season's over. The next few episodes are going to be mad. Next time now, we are going to come back for the first leg against Real Madrid, as well as the Manchester United game. Then the next episode, second leg of the Champions League semi-final and Liverpool. Yeah, these games aren't easy, are they? Thank you for watching today's episode, as always. I hope you did enjoy it. Let me know what you thought of the episode. What do you think of the players? Is Jude Bellingham the second coming of Christ? In my eyes, he might well be. He has been absolutely ridiculous for us so far. 7.69 rating in the league. In the Champions League, he's carrying us as well. And uh, I feel like we might have a bit of a bargain on our hand with the price that we've paid. I will catch you guys again tomorrow for the Champions League semi-final and that massive game against Manchester United. Until then, take it easy. It's me, Jack, and I'll see you on the next one. I'm out.